Welcome friends. Today we are doing a vintage haul video. Sensational. Now you may remember me saying in the last vintage haul that that would be the last vintage haul but then these appeared and you will see when I unveil them why I decided I had to have them. Um, there is some rare stuff here and I am glad to have it. I can't see myself getting any more hauls. Um, this is considerably smaller than the last time I struck. So, um, yes, any any future hauls will just be like a couple of bottles, probably, uh, unless like some outrageous deals pop up. So, let's crack on, shall we? First, I will start with something outrageous that I got that I didn't ask for, but was sent anyway. And that is, you may be thinking, wow, that's a huge bottle. And you'd be correct, it is, because it's not a bottle at all. It's a factice. A Factice of Calvin by Calvin, the original Calvin for men. This, it's just called Calvin by Calvin Klein. It's not called Calvin for men, but it is a huge bottle. And it is, it is we'll go with my other two Factices, which are, of course, Dirda, Dirda, Koros, and Opium, Erda Toilette. These are my Factices. This has actually got water in it. The other two don't, but... There we are. That Koros is going a little bit yellow. You can't see it. Sorry, I just nudged you there, didn't I? Uh, you can't see it. That Koros is just yellowing just a little bit. So, maybe I will bleach you, Koros. You can't do that. It's not how Koros were meant to be. The actual uh, Greek statues were all whitewashed. They weren't supposed to be white, like the Elgin marbles and stuff like that. Anyway, less of the less of that. Let's talk about what's really culturally important here, which is perfume. We will start with a couple of backups, and then we will probably end with a couple of backups. So I decided after trying this last time that I really liked it and I didn't want to lose it, so I got some more Honda Hom Gray. And this is just to make sure I don't run out. These are only 75 mil bottles. We have fucking 75 mil bottles. At least these have got lids. Um they're not testers, these. Some of these are testers, and thank God. So, this is absolutely fantastic. Love it. It's a bit like uh, Smalt Au Pour Homme, which I also dearly love. Um, apart from this, it's got a much more citrusy top. Smalt Au Pour Homme seems on me to have more of a... More of a... A smoky sort of aromatic opening. This is much more citrusy. So... Yes, I am glad to have the Homme de Grey and back it up. Next, I will show you these. Now, this is the original Mugler. It's got Thierry Mugler written on it. I also, but I tore this on opening, so uh, sorry about that. I also got a refill. This is Thierry Mugler, the refill. Any Mugler Amen you can find with Thierry Mugler written on it, just buy it. Uh, the the Mugler version, where it just says Mugler on the top. See, that's how I've ripped it, isn't it? Um, that says Mugler on it, not just on the top, but anywhere, um, is the new latest L'Oreal version of its pants. Um, excuse me whilst I hydrate. I hydrate quite a lot. Anyway, this is the Thierry Mugler version, as you can quite clearly see on the bottom. It says Thierry Mugler. It's such a dinky little thing. It's so beautiful. It's absolutely fantastic. I mean, the, the, Eugene would go mental, the amount of fingerprints on this. He'd be doing his ends. He'd probably try to pull his teeth out just looking at it. So I'll take that off screen. Sorry about that. Um, a bit of Mugler. A bit of Mugler. A bit of vintage Mugler there for you. Um, what else did I also back up? I got this. I got a vit I got a backup of Costume National. Um, I really like the juice. There's no more bottles and it's very hard to find and I really like it. This is modern perfume done well. It's got a Tom Ford sort of vibe. I think it was Roby on that. It's, God, it's so nice. It's really, really good. This is like signature scent sort of stuff, you know? This is the sort of stuff Tom Ford used to bring out before he started doing bitter peach and fucking, fucking fabulous, which fucking wasn't. Uh, he could have named almost any of his other fragrances fucking fabulous and it would have been perfectly fine. But he released that one and called it fucking fabulous, even though it fucking wasn't. So 
Fuck that. Sorry, Tom, you can't win them all. Um, next. What did I get? That's a partial. Don't be afraid of partials, especially if it's stuff you, you want and it's rare. What do we have next? There's not that much here, actually. I'm used to like settling in for like half an hour, 45 minutes. I'm not going to be here for like 20 minutes this time. Um, we will go for this. What are you? Yes. This is the Parfum de Toilette Femme Rocha. By Rochas, even. This is absolutely stunning. And there is 150 mil Eau de Toilette as well. Edmund Rudnetska at his finest. This is absolutely gorgeous stuff. To me, this smells a bit like um, Feminine Dubois. It's got that sort of that sort of sweet, dark sweetness about it, like an ambery, thick, resinous sort of thing. This is just on first smell. First time I've ever smelled it. Um, I remember Eugene went into the place where I got this on Chante in Canada. Just search on Chante Perfume. You will find him. He's a very good man. And I'm just putting that on skin. Oh, I need that to settle for a little while. It's very powdery, very rich. It's um, it's a proper, it's a proper like ladies like perfume, you know, like like a, like a real lady would wear this sort of thing. Um, next, what shall I, what shall I wear? What shall I show you next? Let's have a look at this. Ambra by Etro. This is the eau de cologne. They only do eau de parfum now. And uh, all the toilette, I beg your pardon, and they are not as good. This is a little bootlet. What have you got to say? The scent of balsam floating up the Danube of Venetian tapestries of Babylonian sensuality, oriental, feminine by literary tradition, does not really make a distinction between the sexes. Body and hair shampoo and late parfum off the late parfum offer the seduction of perfume even during the ritual of bath. This isn't, I don't use like stuff like that um but this is meant to be lovely so blind blind first impressions oh that is nice that's like um amber sultan but not as no that's really nice that's really really nice oh i might be wearing that soon it's an eau de cologne i don't know what the I don't know what the performance is like. It smells beautiful, though. It really does. Uh, this is my scent of the day, just in case you were wondering. Moods by Kritzia. I found it quite sharp. Quite scratchy for a patch. Scratchy patchy. Um, lovely, that, mind. Um, oop, I'll put you back there. You're not part of the video. Um, next, what shall I show you? I'll show you this. I've got another partial. A modern... More modern, Sport de Pago Rabanne. I've got an older one of these, um, and the top notes are gone. But this is really nice. This is this is really, really nice. I really like this. Um, it's like an oak mossy. So you can imagine like 80s tennis players like Jimmy Connors and John McEnroe wearing this while they're shouting at each other and, and, playing, on, and playing with short shorts and mustaches and big hair. You know what I mean? That's what this smells like. Fantastic. Really like this stuff. Fresh. Fresher than the fresher than the original. It's got it's got a little bit in common with the original, but not a lot. Um and I'm really glad to have that backed up. That one's got the top notes. The other one's just oak moss, essentially. It's really nice. I'll still keep it because it's really nice. Um what shall I show next? Oh, sugar and spice. Um I just dropped it on my foot. Adamus, Devon, a vintage, Eau de Cologne Natural Spray. Um, country Eau de Cologne. I don't know if that means it's bigger. Um, but this came in a box. This isn't a tester. That's a whiff. Oh, oh, that's very masculine. That's very, that's very musty. You know, that musty sort of smell that you get. I don't know what that is. Is that a tobacco leaf? What's that floating in front of the... Is that loads of particles just floating in front of the camera? I don't know if you can see that. 
anyway, um, that's lovely. Um, very musty though, very mustachioed. Oh, I'll have to see what's in that. Totally forgotten what that's about, but that's really good. Next, I will show this. Another partial, but I paid next to nothing for this. It's got a crack in the top, but you'll see why it's awesome when I show you it. It is the original Bellamy, the shaker bottle. The outrageous shaker bottle. And here's its newer friend. Well, cousin, brother, daughter, son, something like that. Offspring, progeny, you know. Other words that denote that sort of thing. Um, didn't realise they had the same top. That's interesting. This is just slightly, like, frankly, blacker than this. This is quite a black perfume with, like, the smoke and the leather. Um, it's really nice. It's really, really well made how it unfurls and, like, brightens, even though it starts so pitch tar black. Um, it's not negative that I'm saying that, trust us. It's really good this is for a serious man in a in like a in like a, a serious place doing serious things um don't know i thought i was gonna wear Rikitos today and then i thought no i will go with moods because i haven't worn it yet oh yes as well you may notice the background has changed um i moved everything around i think this is the second time i'm telling you this but i moved everything around so uh we, so you could have something better to look at and I could have access to some of the perfumes I haven't worn so far. Like Queer Canage is just over here and Eau Noir is just here. And then I've got the three... Um, the three um, Chanel's I've got here. The Les Exclusives, which is Queer Arousi, Guadazil, and the other one is Coromandel. The Queer Arousi is an eau de toilette. Anyhow, back to the matter at hand. Bellamy, shake a bottle. These go for hundreds online. I think I picked it up for about 50 Canadian. Like, I don't think he's got any more. Sorry about that. Um, I only got the, I only got one, like, so. Next, we will go with this. This is a rare beast indeed. And this is called... Oh, sugar. Vintage Grun, Gruny. Natural cologne. These people, what they did is, right, they tried for a very short time, very short-lived, but very noble idea. They made perfumes of, like, a vintage, like wine. Like, you know, like, you get, like, 87 and 53, like, vintages of wine. Um, and some years are better than others, and some flowers are better than others, and, like, some grapes are better than others. That's what they did with this. The ingredients are all from one year and one time. Um... And apparently they just went straight, straight down the pan. 1988 Premiere Edition. There you go. What a great idea. I was put onto this by Duncan, who was raving about it. So I thought, oh, I'll pick up a bottle of that if I can find one. And then I did it on Chante. I don't think he's got any more, but it's worth an ask. Um, they are... It's very noble. This I had a spray and I already forgot what it smells like. Oh God almighty, look at that spray. Oh no. <laughs> it smells 80s. It does smell 88. This perfume's almost as old as I am then. I was born in 85. I got love for you if you were born in the 80s. Like this perfume and Koros. And Antaeus. And most of my fragrances, to be quite honest. Um Next, I smelled Audrey Jane's. I smelled Audrey Jane. I smelled Audrey Jane's version of this, and I thought that smells quality. Um, even if it's not my thing, and I thought to myself, if I can ever get a bottle of this, I'm gonna get it. Um, and then I found one because he did have one left. I don't know if he still got one. He might do, but that's Nahima Parfum de Toilette. I think that's a 90s version, an early 90s version. And it is magnifique. It is very, very brilliant as a perfume. Um, not my style. But as someone who like reveres vintage perfumes, I love it. It's 
a genius rose um even if it's not really my thing do you know what i mean being able to appreciate something that's not necessarily your taste i think that's that comes with like i think that come in 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 life i think that comes as something as you get older but i think in perfume i think as you as you have been doing it for longer you begin to appreciate quality not necessarily like just the stuff that you love you know um So yeah, I thought if I can snatch a bottle of this, maybe I'll come round to it one day. So that was Nahima. Now I've got four bottles left, and they are all the same but different. <laughs> so they're all well. I'll tell you, they're all Koros, but they're all different versions of Koros. Now I will start with the flankers. Oh, well, I mean, what am I doing? So these are, this is a tester. And this is a Parfums Core version of Coros Fraîcheur. This is the original from the early 90s. I think it was released in 93, I want to say. I haven't smelled it yet. I might do a first impressions video on the, uh, on the Coros, on the Coros flankers anyway. Um... This is, I'm absolutely fucking buzzing to own this. I'm buzzing to own all of these. I'll, I'll show you in turn and because why they're so special. This is the Parfums Core version. So it's early 90s, the original 93 release. I beg your pardon. Um, I can't wait to like get to wear this in like the spring, summer. I love the way it looks, the way it feels, even though it's a tester on the back, I don't care. Um, as you can see there on the bottom, and as you could see there on the bottom, Parfums Court. That is a rare beast. Next, a backup of Koros Eau de Sport. This is a Charles of the Ritz version, right? Because of the way you can tell by the stamp on the bottom, the batch code on the bottom, the way it's imprinted, and the fact that it just says Paris. Made in France. I am almost certain that is what defines Charles of the Ritz version. And this is in immaculate condition. It's a splash. Like I care. Um, like I say, you've got a... Oh, oh. You've... Oh, oh, oh. Ah. Mint. I just smell so strong. And so thick. And yet so pitch perfect. Right. Next, I got a backup tester of a vintage Koros, just a normal Koros from Parfums Core. Can you see that? I don't know. There you go. There's a Parfums, Parfums Core vintage. So that's late 80s, early 90s. Full, being kept in the right conditions. I don't chante. Never, never had a problem with that. And then, last but not least, an absolute starlet. Charles of the Ritz, full bottle of Koros, the original iteration. This is how it was always, this was how it was meant to smell. This is what Pierre Bourdon made, without it being reformulated, without it being moved between different houses to make, different uh, oil houses and stuff like that. An absolute triumph of perfumery. I've got, this is the second bottle I've got of this, of the Charles of the Ritz version. Um, and I'm absolutely over the moon. Any bottle with the silver shoulders is superior to what's being released now. What's being released now is not very good. Um, but that is absolutely something else. It is frighteningly good. It is so good. I'm almost scared to wear it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to lose it. I don't want to be without it. That's the problem with buying all these vintages. You, you, that you can't just go to the shop and buy them up again. You know, like I've seen people criticizing, um, legitimately as well, like hoarding bottles and stuff like that. But if it makes people like that feel any better, I do intend to wear them. 
Um, and if that doesn't make you feel better, well, then you can fucking go fuck yourself, frankly. Because um, I've got them. And I intend to wear them. So, there you are. Thank you for watching. This has been my vintage haul. Again, I don't think there'll be any more. Um, but you never know if something turns up in the back of a in the back of a cupboard or something like that. I have developed an amazing relationship with Anouj from Enchanté. I'll see if I can put the link in the description to his website um, to get in touch with him. Have something on hand that you know you want and ask him if he's got it in a vintage. And he might do. There is some stuff here in my collection that I had no idea that I would ever be able to get a hold of. Stuff like... Another YSL secret de parfum. Um, what else? I bought loads. You remember I bought loads of Balenciaga Pour Homme. I bought like, like 10, 50 mil bottles off him. Um, what else? Uh, the Bellamy, you know? So, yeah. Give it a go. I will speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.